Here is the graphical explanation of the five transformations we did. We started with the equation y equals x squared, so you're seeing that graph. And what we did is we replaced the input variable x with parentheses x plus 3. And I claimed when you did that manipulation on the equation, that would have a subsequent uh, transformation of the graph of a shift to the left three units. So graphing that, you can see that the now blue graph is a shift to the left three relative to the red. Because the uh, graphing uh, plane here gets uh, convoluted with several graphs, I'm going to take off the red graph. Now this is what I called f sub 1 in the algebraic uh, explanation. Moving from function 1 to function 2, applying the second transformation, we took the input variable x and replaced it with minus x, and I made the argument that that would be, in terms of graphs, a y-axis reflection. To explain what a y-axis reflection is, imagine being in kindergarten and putting blue finger paint on this piece of paper, and imagine then you were to fold the piece of paper about this vertical line. The question is, if you fold it about the vertical line, where would this finger paint go? Hopefully you see that it would flop over from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. More specifically, for example, the point negative 3, 0 here would get mapped over here to 3, 0. Uh, graphing it uh, in this pale green ugly color, in fact, uh, you see that uh, exactly that happens. Uh, moving along to the next transformation, what we did was we simply copied the equation. We did not manipulate the input variable. Uh, we simply copied the previous function, you can think of that as the output, and simply put a subtract 1 at the end, and I argued that moves a function down in terms of its graph. And you can see that if you were to take the pale green color here, move it down 1, you'd get the purple graph. So let me turn this one off and move to the next transformation for which we again did not manipulate the input variable. We simply copied the previous equation down and then multiplied uh, two in front. We called that a vertical scaling by a factor of two. And at that point in the problem, I said when we get to the graph, you'd see that that is called a vertical stretch. Uh, some people describe that as being uh, like a rubber band or some putty or something that you can physically stretch out. And I'm not sure that's the best explanation, but uh, what that is is if you were to take and label all the y values or all the points on the purple graph and do nothing to the inputs, leave them alone, but multiply all your outputs, the y values by 2, you would get the points on the orange graph. And for lack of a better phrase, we call this a vertical stretch. It does look like it gets stretched out. In fact, with a vertical stretch, uh, all points will get moved except for x-intercepts. The reason being is that the outputs, the y values of an x-intercept is 0, and when you go and you take that output of 0 and we multiply it by 2, 2 times 0 is still 0. So notice the x-intercepts don't change with a vertical scaling. Uh, the last manipulation we did was to take the previous equation, copy it down, and then simply put a negative out in front. It looks like I copied it down wrong. This was supposed to be a parenthesis here, so I need to fix this. This was supposed to be a left parenthesis here and a big right parenthesis out uh, there. Uh, so now having done that, um, I argued that you could put the parentheses outside the two, but it was equivalent to doing it this way. Uh, and I made the argument that when you do that, when you copy a function down and put uh, multiply by a negative 1, notice that everything in here is getting multiplied by uh, the negative as well as the 2. So this previous function, the entire thing is getting multiplied by a negative 1. That reflects about the x-axis. That explanation is just like the y-axis reflection. You put finger paint on the page. So I would have orange finger paint. I would put it here. The difference is, imagine folding the piece of paper about the x-axis, the horizontal line. Where would the finger paint go? So anything on the x-axis wouldn't change, uh, but everything else would. So this part down here, if you folded the piece of paper, that finger paint would get smudged up here. And likewise, anything above the x-axis would get flipped down below the y-axis. It's better if I just show you. Uh, so if you can imagine the orange uh, finger paint on a piece of paper, fold that piece of paper about the x-axis here, the result would be that that finger paint would go uh, where you see the black. Of course, it wouldn't be black. It'd still be orange, but you get the idea.